I've been traveling a lot in Nairobi Airport, and uh, since every time I go into an airport, the travel consultant is standing right in the back, and it seems like they've never seen a wheelchair before. And they kind of stand there, and you see the blood drain from their face. It's called wheelchair-induced shock, you see. And as I get closer, I can see them looking at each other, saying, hope he goes to you. No, no, he'll go to you. No, he'll go to you. And I get closer and closer, and then they start saying, go to here, go to him, go to here. And um, I find it very difficult to make decisions. So I just sit there for a while, just deciding, and I decided to go to him because he was better looking. <laughs> so, um, so I got to him and um, he kind of looked at me kind of blankly and picked up the, one of those phones that they had behind the counter. Yeah, and um, I don't think there's anyone on the other end ever. But it looks good, doesn't it? He got the phone and he said, wheelchair, what do I do? <laughs> and all of a sudden, sirens go off around the airport. Lights flash, the wheelchair signs on the toilet, they start flashing. And uh, suddenly people are coming at me. Hundreds of people are running out of these hidden doors around the airport. And I'm just sitting there watching. And there are so many of them there running into each other. And I think a couple of them ended up in wheelchairs as a result. But never mind. So it's all very exciting. I'm just sitting there and just watching it all happen. I did finally get to Adelaide, which was quite interesting. Adelaide's, Adelaide is a nice place. If you say Adelaide with enough slur, it sounds like LA. <laughs> which is much better, really, isn't it? People get much more excited, which is good. And also got to Melbourne which is an interesting place as well. In Melbourne, people pull over to the left to turn right <laughs> in the left lane. And um, when they want to go left, they turn right three times. <laughs> <laughs> so it takes a hell of a long time to get anywhere in Melbourne. <laughs> But anyway, I didn't actually get you back on the plane, did I? I? I actually did get on the plane eventually, and a very nice, cute uh, flight attendant came up to me and said, Sir, are you OK? And I said, look, I'm fine, but I wonder, could you do something for me? Could you just put this bomb that I've got with me in the overhead locker? <laughs> and he said, sure. <laughs> Worries. We do that all the time. <laughs> and we get trained as well to do it, which is great. So, speaking of bombs, I, um, I dropped my boyfriend last week. Yes. Thank you, thank you. Don't, but don't patronise me, please. No, um, it was getting a bit much. Um, I felt trapped in the relationship I did, because um, he parked his car behind mine in the driveway, and I couldn't reverse. <laughs> you know, and I, I'm sure you all know that it's quite important to be able to reverse in relationships, you know? You go so far, and then you realise, no. No, wrong way, backwards. Yes, <laughs> back we go. And um, also, uh, he picked his nose in bed. Yes, yes. And with both of us doing it, it was a bit of a bad look, really. Yeah, a bit of a bad look. Bit messy. Yes. But, but what, what actually did it for me, what, what did it was that um, he would insist 
on putting the toothpaste cap on the toothpaste. And um, I, I cannot remember how many times I said to him, don't you know how long it takes me <laughs> to get the toothpaste cap off the fucking toothpaste? Thank you very much.